Well, good evening. Um, let's try this again. If you haven't seen me the first time, there were little difficulties um, with noise and distraction. So I found another quiet spot and so we can get started with our lesson today. Um, we've already prayed, but I'm just thanking the Lord just for this space um, that we have now to be able to get our lesson done. So, all right, kids, are you ready? All right, well, we were talking about the knowing gifts, that this is the gift um, from the Holy Spirit. There are three gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us. Um, one is the gift of the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, and the gift of discernment. And it comes from my memory verse, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 and 10. Well, it's 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10, but we're going to read 1 Corinthians um, 12, 8 and 10. It says, to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, and to another, discerning of spirits. And so we talked about the Holy Spirit gives Christians um, gifts to help us to make decisions that are Christ-like, also to guide us, and also to help us to minister to others. So let's look at the first um, gift, and that gift is the gift of knowledge. And the gift of knowledge is just knowing facts. You know, the, the Spirit may give you the gift of knowledge and you may know something about a person or a situation that no one has told you about. You know, um, knowledge is accumulation of facts, of being mentally aware of something. Um, and we know we can also get the gift of knowledge through study and observation. But... The gift of knowledge is definitely different from natural knowledge. The gift of knowledge is when God helps us to know something that we have never learned through natural methods. So let's look at a scripture um, where we can see this um, take place. Let's look at 2 Kings 5. We're going to start at verses 20 and go through to 26. And today I have my paraphrase Bible because it helps me to... Um, Speak it as we would today to help us to understand it a little bit better. Again, we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 20 through 26. Okay. Now, just to give you a little background, um, there was a man named Naaman who had leprosy. And someone told him if he went to the man of God, he could help him. And so he went to see the prophet Elijah. And so when he went to see the prophet Elijah, Elijah asked him to go to the Jordan River and to dip seven times. And that's what he did. And the leprosy, he was healed of leprosy. And so um, Naaman wanted to give Elijah's gifts, but Elijah would not take those gifts. But Elijah had a servant named Gehazi. So let's see what Gehazi did. So starting at verse 20, it says, But, Ge but Gehazi, Elisha's um, servant, said to himself, My master shouldn't have let this fellow get away without taking his gifts. I will chase after him and get something from him. So you know what? Gehazi caught up with him. And when Naaman saw him coming, he jumped down from his chariot and ran to meet him. Is everything all right? He asked. Yes, he said, but my master has sent me to tell you that two young prophets from the hills of Ephraim have just arrived and he would like 2,000 to 2,000 in silver and two suits to give to them. Oh, Naaman said, well, take 4,000. He gave him two expensive robes, tied up the money in two bags and gave them to two of his servants to carry back with Gehazi. But when they arrived at the hill where Elijah lived, Gehazi took the bags from the servants and sent the men back. Then he hid the money in his house. When he went in to his master, Elijah asked him, he said, where have you been, Gehazi? Oh, I haven't been anywhere, he replied. But watch this. But Elijah asked him, don't you realize that I was there and thought when Naaman stepped down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to receive money and clothing and olive farms and vineyards and sheep and oxen and servants? 
He said, because you have done this, Naaman's leprosy shall be upon you and upon your children and your children's children forever. And Gehazi walked from the room a leopard, his skin as white as snow. So, wow, even though Elijah was not there with Gehazi, the Lord allowed him to see and to know everything that transpired. So God gave him the wisdom of knowledge. So the second one is the gift of wisdom. And that is just to know how to use those facts when God gives them, when the Holy Spirit gives them to you. Wisdom is understanding what to do with the knowledge that we have been given. Um, Proverbs 4 and 6 says, cling to wisdom, she will protect you. Love her, she will guard you. Proverbs 9, verses 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So we know that knowledge and wisdom comes from God. Well, let's look at an example in the Bible of how the Lord gives those who are believers wisdom. We're going to be coming from 1 Kings chapter 3. Let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. All righty. And we're going to start at verse 16 through 28. Okay. Soon after two young women came to the king to have an argument settled. Sir, one of them began, we live in the same house just the two of us. And recently I had a baby. When it was born, hold on just a second, I apologize. It says, sir, one of them began, we live in the same house, just the two of us, and recently I had a baby. When it was three days old, this woman's baby was born too. But her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it in her sleep and smothered it. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep and laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. And it was dead. No, it says, and in the morning when I tried to feed my baby, it was dead. I apologize. But when it became light outside, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted. It certainly was her it certainly was her son. I apologize. I do not know why I am getting these words confused. Then the other woman interrupted. It certainly was her son and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the dead one is yours and the living one is mine. And so they argued back and forth before the king. Then the king said, Let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child and each say that the dead child belongs to the other. All right, well, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, divide the living child in two and give half to each of these women. Then the woman who really was the mother of the child and who loved him very much cried out, oh, no, sir, give her the child. Don't kill him. But the other woman said, All right, it will be neither yours nor mine. Divide it between us. Then the king said, Give the baby to the woman who wants him to live, for she is the mother. Words of the king's decision spread quickly throughout the entire nation, and all the people were awed as they realized the great wisdom, there it is, that God had given him. So the Lord had given him wisdom to discern what was going on in between this situation. And because of that, the baby um, was given to the correct mother. So that, that is another gift, the gift of wisdom. And to look at the third gift, the third gift is the gift of discernment. The gift of discernment is the ability to know the difference between good and evil spirits. We know that some spirits are particularly deceiving because they seem harmless. Um, we need God's supernatural gift to guide us. 
the gift of discernment or distinguishing between spirits. And we're going to look at that um, in Acts 16, 16 through 18, where Paul recognized the source of information and the motivating power of the fortune teller. So let's find Acts verses 16, 16 through 18. Acts 16. Verses 16 through 18. It says, One day as we were going down to the place of prayer beside the river, we met a demon-possessed slave girl who was a fortune teller and earned much money for her masters. She followed along behind us shouting, These men are servants of God and they have come to tell you how to ha have your sins forgiven. This went on day after day until Paul, in great distress, turned and spoke to the demon within her. I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her, he said, and instantly it left her. And so he was able to discern that spirit that that young slave lady had in her. And so we know that we can find Wisdom and knowledge and all of this in the Word of God and the Holy Spirit gives those to us, to believers who are saved and who are filled with the Spirit. Um, and you may ask, well, how can we find wisdom for, for our daily life? Well, it's in the Bible. You read the Bible and, and through prayer. That's how you can find wisdom and knowledge. And then you may ask also, how can each of these gifts help us in our daily lives well for one they can help us tell others about jesus the spirit can give you the wisdom to know what to say and what to do it's as first he does who is the holy spirit he does a work in the hearts of people everywhere jesus told the disciples that he would send the spirit into the world to convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment and we can find that in john 16 7 through 11. The Spirit applies the truths of God to the minds of men to convince them that they are sinners. And responding to that conviction brings men to salvation. Okay? So it can help us, these gifts can help us to tell others about Jesus. Another way that it can help us, it can help us to make good decisions. John 16 and 33, John 16 and 13 says that he shall guide you into all truth. We know that the Holy Spirit, he is the ultimate God. He goes before us. He's leading the way. He, he is removing obstructions and obstacles out of our way. He opens up our understanding and he makes all things plain and clear to us. He leads us the way that we should go in all spiritual things. And without him, you know, we're apt to fall into error. Um, so we must be led by the Spirit. And again, the way that these gifts can help us, it can help us control ourselves. You know, the Spirit also functions as a fruit producer in our lives. When, when he dwells in us, he brings the works of harvest our, and harvesting his fruits in our lives. You know, we talked about that in a lesson before, the fruits of the Spirit. We know that it's love, it's joy, peace, patience, kindness, you know, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So when he indwells in us, he starts to work and producing those fruits in us, getting those bad things out of us and putting those good things in us. So kids, let's willingly let God use these gifts to help us to help others you know you may ask well you know how do how do we do that you know it may be in leading a friend to jesus to know jesus um that's a way the holy spirit can help us in these gifts it may be confronting a you know or comforting someone who's hurting you know he may um um, the Holy Spirit may help us with that, discern um, that. Um, also to discern, you know, when someone to be able to identify a lie, you know, the truth from a lie. Um, the Holy Spirit can help us um, with that, the Holy Spirit and these gifts. 
So the spiritual gifts of knowledge, of wisdom, and discernment, remember, they are specific for specific situations for us who are believers and who are filled with the Holy Spirit. This, these gifts are not just given to anyone, but it's those who are um, believers and who are filled with the Spirit. Okay? Well, I thank you for your time today. Um, I hope you took away something out of this lesson. I thank you. Um, so let's end with prayer, and hopefully we'll be back again next Saturday at 7. I apologize again for being a little late today from all the distractions, but we were able to go ahead and find a spot and be able to do it. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, Lord. We who are believers, we who have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. Father, we just thank you for not only being a hearer of this word, but God, allowing us to be a doer, applying these principles to our lives, Lord. Father, let us be led through the Holy Spirit so that he can show us um, how to use our wisdom and and, and once we know things, obtain facts and know what to do with them and to be able to discern from good and evil. Um, Father, I just thank you for each and every one that is listening to this um, lesson and those who may listen to it later. Father, may it be a blessing unto them. We thank you and praise you in Jesus name. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye.